Hey guys, I hope you are well. Welcome to me, Nikki from Beyond Dash UK. So guys, Pluto has Station Direct. This is like my, I think it's my third video on Pluto being in Capricorn. So yeah, it's gone direct. You know, if you want to know what Pluto in Capricorn means, I have videos, guys, uh, for all the signs. I've also got a video about when Pluto went into Capricorn through the houses what happened through the houses i feel that it's more or less playing out you know the planets and the houses don't lie so check those videos out guys and i've also done one for pluto retrograde for all the signs but yeah i've done video this is like probably my third or fourth video about pluto and capricorn this is the last one as well but it has to be because the last time so i just wanted to come today to talk about because some of you have messaged me about, you know, your stories about Pluto and Capricorn. Some, um, and also, and thank you guys. I want to say in the beginning, thank you so that, um, so that I can say some of the things, some of the themes that have happened during Pluto being in Capricorn. I'll talk about certain things that happened to me as well, guys. Now... And some of you have also obviously um, given me permission. So, again, thank you. So, guys, I just want to, you know, sort of like round up. Because we're not going to see this happen again, thank God. <laughs> um, if we're talking about going from 2008 till now, I, I personally felt like a huge shift. I think I've said this before, but I felt like a huge shift when Pluto went into Capricorn because i'm from you know pluto and libra generation and you know in the noughties i was in my 20s and it was really it was it was it was it was life felt easier basically um obviously in this country we have labor and we have the tory government labor is about the people we're supposed to be about the people so when i was like a teenager going to my 20s in the noughties, um, it was, Labour was in power. And also, Pluto was in Sagittarius. And you know, Sagittarius rules court, law, systems, it, it's about high beliefs, it's about high learning. In fact, my generation actually pioneered the gap year. So instead of going straight to uni, or some of us even went, instead of going college or uni, we actually travelled the world. And that was under Pluto and Sagittarius. Pluto and Sagittarius also rules faraway places as well. So a lot of us travelled. A lot of us didn't go uni. Some of us just did what we wanted to do. Some of us went to work. But it just felt a bit easier. Now, this fell under my sixth house. Cause I've got Saggy in the six. So work obviously came very easy to me. You know, I was working. With, and also Sagittarius also ruled... Uh, race, religion, culture. So I was working with a lot of people from different creeds and different cultures. I was probably like the only like British born there. Um, but also I'm of Jamaican descent. So uh, I, I can, you know, work with other creeds and cultures is nothing new to me. Parents are immigrants. It's nothing new. So, you know, I was working with people from different creeds and different cultures and yeah, we never really all we never all got on, but we had to work together, and in the end, sometimes we did actually get on. So it, it felt lovely. What else was going on during this time was that people from my generation pioneered like MySpace. They pioneered um, YouTube. You know, Mark Zuckerberg. He's Pluto in Scorpio. He's Neptune in Sagittarius, like me. So. There was a lot of pioneering from my generation in terms of social media, which benefited the next generation, which was Pluto Scorpio, Pluto Sagittarius. So, yes. So there's a lot of that going on. Excuse the clicks, guys, because I am, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I have to pull up here. But anyway, so, yeah, so the Pluto in Libra and Pluto in and Neptune in Sagittarius generation, we... You know, also, we also pioneered, like, 
things like blogging as well, making money through blogging. It was basically in my generation's third house, but it was in my it's in my natal sixth house. So I did find during this time that you know things felt a bit easier during this time. Things felt a bit like you know, I love the fact that I was around people who were from different creeds and cultures. I remember I was I was uh, training to do acting in the theatre, and, and I was around about I was about around about loads of people who were very ambitious, and you know, we everyone was like trying to do something for themselves, go someplace with themselves. So it was a fun time. It was a very fast paced time, though. Things were like moving at a very fast pace. Obviously, some of us didn't really make it, you know, um, and I'll go back to that na later on. But there was um, there wasn't a lot of it, it was it, things came easy, but there was still a lot of um, it, it felt busy. Like there's a lot of like partying and. Yeah, there's a lot of basically there's a lot of partying. There's a lot of um some people some of us were like doing two or three jobs, but not because we had to, because we wanted to, you know. And also during this time, obviously other planets were talking. So we had the Saturn Jupiter conjunction, which was in Taurus, which was like about beauty and everything. So people were trying to live this sort of light lifestyle. It's one of the reasons why some of us had like two or three jobs, because there was this lifestyle that all these celebrities had that and looked amazing but obviously now we know that celebrities actually dying out but then it was a thing of you know trying to attain this type of lifestyle which was which we know is fake so there's a lot of that going on but life was very fast paced it was very bam 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 looking back guys that was the time to actually have kids <laughs> it was the time to actually have i know you're thinking eh? yes it was the time because whenever you're getting trined or sextiled, especially generational pla especially generational planets, it's the it's that time. So basically it was the time for like my generation to utilize social media through, you know, uh through blogging, through writing, through journaling, through being a journalist, um, whether it was even entertainment, it was that time. But it was also the time if you wanted to have kids, even though life was very fast, it was the time it was the best time to have a child because you're getting trained. Obviously, it depended on what was going on in your personal house chart, but generationally it was that time. So yeah, it was a busy time. Things I felt slowed down in 2007, 8, and I think obviously the nodes were in Pisces. The, yeah, the nodes ent entered Pisces in 2006. No, in 2007. But we had the lunar eclipse in Pisces in 2006. So the nodes started edging, going backwards. Obviously, whenever it goes into... Well, the nodes in general go backwards, guys, as you know. But when it goes into like Pisces and Virgo, especially Pisces, we're ending a 18-year cycle from like the 80s. From like 88, 89, that's the end of a cycle. And some, oh, my mind's just gone blank. But anyway, what I actually mean is that when the nodes goes into Pisces, yeah, we are ending a cycle, basically. We are ending a cycle. But when it goes into Aries, like at the beginning, but because it goes backwards, it feels like we're beginning, but we're also going back as well, if you know what I mean. So when it went, went into Pisces, things sort of became real. Even though Polluter was still in Saggy, it was edging out. This was before, because I've always been into astrology, but this was before I even knew about the planets properly. Yeah, properly planet situation. So because um, not only what was going on then, so we had the nodes going into Pisces and Virgo, which is happening next year. We had Saturn, which was in Virgo. I was having my Saturn return. We also had... We had the crash. Yeah, there was a crash in 2007. Like, late 2007. And, my God, things felt different. Things changed. And 
I mean, I, at that time, I was very lucky that I was still working because a lot of people I knew lost jobs. And, yeah, it was a... It was a... Yeah, it, it was... It, it felt... The darkness was starting to emerge. The darkness was starting to emerge. But I was working in a cinema with a lot of creatives. So even though I knew what was going on... um. And also, I felt like my life was changing as well, you know, because of my Saturn return. And also, but but because I was busy, you know, I just, you know, just went with it. But when the 2008 came, I just, this, this, this is one thing I didn't realise, was Saturn, that Pluto entered Aquarius and Pluto entered Capricorn. And at Jesus Christ, the shift was real. The shift was real. So... You know, other other people, you know, things just felt really slow when Pluto went to Capricorn. Um, I did feel that certain things that I was doing or starting to do, it just was not materialising. But this was before I knew that my, I was getting squid, nat- I was getting squid, not just natally, but also generationally. So, yes. Um, I'm going to go to some other people, what they've said to me that, you know, during Pluto in Capricorn, some people, they'll say that some, some people, some of my, they my fans, they said that they actually really benefited because they started, some, some people like left college, they left uni and they went, some of the people went straight into work. Some people actually, um, yeah, some people went straight into work. Some people started their businesses and because of social media was booming as well. Remember, the 2010s, social media started to boom really big. Social media was booming. That's when some of you also started to, you know, start your own career business. Some did cake businesses. Some did puppetry. Um, some people started doing sewing. Some of you started to do, I must listen, I'm reading here, yeah, some of you started to do poetry, um, some of you actually started to be artists, like you did acting, some of you did singing, um, what else, what else, yeah, some of you did acting, singing, uh, some of you actually became owners of, you know, you, some of you, you know, even though the time when wasn't great, some of you were actually home owners as well, so... But yeah, some of you also became parents. Some of you actually became parents, which was a shock to I know some of some of you read that it was actually a bit of a shock to you all. So but also from what I'm also seeing is that a lot of you um actually enjoyed this transit from 2008 till now, like 15 years. And yeah, um, you know, I I, I think that's great if you if because you know, remember I got trained. And I, th- I believe that a lot of you who've written to me are Pluto and Scorpio generation. So what you're telling me, it actually, <laughs> it actually is like a very Pluto and Scorpio thing because you lot are getting your third house activated. Um, you know, even when some of you were talking about how you made your business on social media. Yeah, you know, that this, this was the time, you know, because a lot of you also have Pluto, a lot of you also have um, Capricorn in your chart. Like Neptune and Capricorn, because Neptune and Capricorn is not the easiest. But I think if you utilize it, like everything becomes a business, especially when it comes to spirituality. And yes, a lot of you were astrologers, but also everything becomes like a business, whether it's astrology, everything's a business, guys, basically. So, yes. So, yeah, a lot of you, but some of you have also said that you really, and I, I, and I, can, I can feel that some of you were from my generation as well. But some of you also said that you didn't really benefit. Some of you, you know, did become parents and, you know, thank you for this. But some of you had losses of when you uh, became pregnant. There were some losses, there were some family losses as well. Some of you had to really delve deep into your, um, the past because issues came up to do with like your mum, even some of you, your dad, but some of it was like your mum. The past actually came out. You saw people from your past. Some of you actually were trying to start a business because, you know, as we know, a lot of us were edging out of our 20s, going into our 30s. So that was a time to have that sort of like family, work family life. 
and it felt hard for a lot of you like you felt like you didn't have a lot of support from your family you felt like you didn't have as much um time with your partner um did, yes you know i'm reading that there was a lot of like movement at home some of you did move home but some of you also just didn't enjoy this whole family life because things felt really harsh you didn't really especially having the support um there was depression along the way whether it was postnatal or whether it was um just general depression which actually really breaks my heart as well um you know there's you know a lot of you are saying and even i agree it was harsh it was harsh there was a lot that we had to contend with the people that benefited especially the pluto and scorpio um some of you also did say that you know you did feel that there's a lot of pressure on you but because you got help from like your mom um, some of you actually got help from your parents some of you didn't so that's why some of you decided you just want the one child <laughs> especially with my generation you just want the one some of you decided to have more than one because you were earning so much money you know some of you were very lucky to be making millions you know i'm very you know that that's i think that's good for you guys especially because capricorn is a sign about hard work and this is a time to like make your riches but also you have to put a lot of work in um some of you uh, you know I've, I've got one here saying that how they actually regret not tending to their family more because they'll concentrate so much on their career and you know making the money and you know you missed a lot out so it's it's a it's a, a lot of these stories are like mixed mixed bag stories and i'm f again thank you guys for sending me thank you for giving me permission to say it as well but you know i feel that you know and i'm and i'm i'm, I'm not just saying it i'm seeing it in real time you know some people that have benefited whether you're especially if you're pluto virgo pluto scorpio i still see complaining you know, I'm not talking, I'm not talking these letters, I'm talking like in general. I'm seeing a lot of people who have benefited, they're complaining about when Pluto goes into Aquarius, what's, go what's it going to be for us? What's going to happen to us? And my thing is, you just have to suck it up. Because we're, we're, we're veering to this territory of being selfish now, okay? When you benefit in life, in life, we all benefit from things. Yeah, I'm not down, trying to sound like a Debbie Downer here. We all benefit. And sometimes we benefit for years. Sometimes we benefit for not a long time. But when we benefit, we must appreciate we've, we've benefited. When that benefit... I'm not saying that when Pluto goes into Aquarius, that it's all going to go completely. You're just going to get squid. And unfortunately, with squids... This is unfortunate because I've had it, yeah? With squids, it's not that kind of party again. It's really not. When you get squid, especially the fourth house, the tenth house, this is like going inner. Yeah? And going inner is not always ideal for us. Some of us want to be on that work treadmill, making the money and, you know, bam, 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 bam. But what I'm telling you, when it comes to your fourth house, yes, you're still going to be working, but you're going to have to be doing some emotional inner work. And it's not easy. It's quite bloody hard. And sometimes when we do that work, things do stop. That is just the way the cookie crumbles, guys. And the fact that some of you are Pluto and Scorpio, you're going to be affected because you're ruled by Pluto. Okay, wherever Pluto goes, that's where the money flows. That's where the life goes. That was actually a, um, <laughs> a little rhyme. So, yeah... Um, Another thing I'm going to say with this is that I my, my blood was quite boiling because I'm, there's this blog. Check it out, guys. It's called Pregnant But Screwed. This woman, she set this blog up. I don't know why I forgot her name, but it's called Pregnancy But Screwed, guys. And she's British and she's of my generation, you know, I always have to big up my generation because I don't think we big ourselves up a lot. But she's from my generation. She set this blog up a long time ago. Yeah. It's for basically mums who are being screwed over by the government. Yeah. And a lot of it 
also is to do with a lot of it is also to do with you know when you're pregnant and yeah when you're pregnant and because i just read today basically pregnant was screwed sorry pregnant was screwed is about you know basic rights for pregnant women who are pregnant who had children also for dads as well so what they're trying to do they're trying to get a bill sorted out for because in uk we have like the worst maternity rights and paternity rights for men and women yeah we are at like what eight months but the pay is not great and also with men it's like a month now i know compared to other countries like i know in america they have it less I know it's not great either. Um, Because some of us are lucky that we can stay at home for months on end. Some of us get the whole 12 months. So I'm not going to complain too much. But some of us, what's happening, and I think, and I blame Pluto and Capricorn. I don't, I don't just blame Pluto and Capricorn. I also blame the Neptune-Saturn conjunction that happened in 1989, 88-89 in Capricorn. Because we're still living that, guys. We're still living that. It's going to end in 2026, less than two years. Thank God. Yeah. But Pluto and Capricorn heightened it. So if you, any of you who have been to my, uh, any of you who have been to my Pluto in Capricorn through the houses, the eighth house is Leo. Okay. The eighth house is Leo. Now with Leo... Yeah, with Leo being the eighth house to this transit for the past 15 years. Leo is actually about children. Leo is actually a generous sign. Leo is actually about, you know, being fair. If you know any Leos, guys, you know, Leos are not very selfish people. But with Capricorn ruling the eighth house, the eighth house is about money, shared resources, government. It could be loans, debt. It's debts as well. But money given to you by the government. It's about inheritance, death, rebirth, yeah? So, with it being under Leo, there was no generosity there. I think that in this government's mind, it was like, we're going to give you this, but you have to do this, okay? So, even if you have kids, we're going to give you a, a, some money, but it ain't going to be long. You have to get back to work, okay? And... Even when it came to like shared resources, it felt like it it felt generous, but it also felt like there was this lot of like you owe me type of thing going on. But it was instead of it being in Scorpio, it was very in Leo, which was very like out there, like you owe me. There was also a lot of flashing going on, like some people who actually again who benefited, like if they were getting money from the government per se. They flaunted it and showed off, like, I don't have to because I'm getting this, I'm getting that. But people who actually were been pouring money into the system for years, and when it was time for the system to repay them back, that didn't happen. So it was felt like the government was showing off, like, yeah, we can do this because you are, you know, <laughs> you, you, you depend on us, this is what we're going to give, but don't expect too much type of thing. That's how it felt. Whereas people that were getting, that they actually didn't need to get, were getting more. So generosity didn't flow to people that needed it, basically what I'm saying. And because it, 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 the 8th house is ruled by Leo, that spilled out big time. Yeah? So I say that, that's my rant, I say that. So it, it, it just feels very, it's, it's such a shame because... A lot of us are raising Pluto in Capricorn kids, yeah? The, I, they, they call them the Gen Z Alpha generation slash pandemic generation. A lot of them didn't experience their parents too much. And also, not only that, a lot of us, our kids square us. Our kids' generation is square us. So when people square you, they need, not only, you know, sometimes you can clash with them, but they need a lot of your time. In order for you to understand them and then for them to understand you. Remember, we're dealing with little adults here. So under this Pluto and Capricorn, we're raising Pluto and Capricorn kids, but they're not getting the full amount of us. 
so some of us it feels that we have to go back to the drawing board the fifth house to this Pluto and Capricorn is Taurus yeah and but it, that felt more like we had to try to attain some type of you know the creativity was very about very um elitist the creativity and also when it comes to like the kids yeah it was like you know, my kids are going to this private school, going to that private school to show others that my kids elite, more elite than your kids. You know, and after they're going to this type of drama school, they're going to this, they're going to be doing this acting, they're going to be speaking this type of language because they're better than this. That's how it felt. Uh, creativity wise, especially for the children, was on lock and key. They did not benefit, guys. They didn't benefit. So with Polluter going direct now, I can't wait till it ends. The great things, some great things came out of it. Me being a mum was one. Being in a loving relationship, that's another. You know, having my friends and my family and, you know. But there was a lot that was not great, guys. So I would say, personally, 20% was good. And that's, and, that is, and that's awful for me to say that. Again, I'm not saying that Pluto and the Cruise is going to be amazing. Because there's going to be a lot of craziness that's gonna go down obviously i'm being biased i'm gonna be trained i'm gonna be trained so it will be easier for me and my generation and i'm hoping especially for the kids generation too it'll just be much more easier but that's one reason why i wanted to do this video because this 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 transit has um has been a wake-up call it's been a wake up call, and another thing I want to say, I don't want to hear no, I don't want to hear no complaining. If you've been, I don't want to hear it. They say that Pluto in Capricorn, Capricorn Saturn is ruled by black people. I don't see that. Black people have suffered under Pluto being in Pluto being in Capricorn. I don't, I don't see it. But yeah, I don't really want to hear that you suffered. I mean. No, I don't want to hear, but I think if you've benefited in any shape or form, whether it's materially, I don't want to hear that you've, oh, what about me? I don't want to hear it. Because one thing about this, I would say that you have to be grateful for what, you, what you've what you earned, what you made, what you created. You have to be grateful. And like I said, that's one reason why I gave it 20%, because I'm very grateful that I've got two healthy kids. Grateful for my family, you know, grateful for my relationship. I'm very grateful. There's things that I'm grateful for. But I think in terms of, even going back to me, even in terms of how things were structured, especially from last decade, it's just not been fair, it's not been easy, it's been harsh, it's been, yeah. And you know, you just won't forget it in a hurry. You just won't forget it in a hurry. So I think that, like again, if you've benefited in any shape or form, guys, I think it's time to look back on the gains that you've had even if you didn't benefit, yeah, just look, just try and pick out certain things that have been great, you know, because when it moves into Aquarius, it's going to be like quick lightning speed, you know, we've already had a taste of it already, guys, there's already been moaning about, oh, changes are happening too fast, and, you know, we've, we're seeing the changes, but it's going to be bam, 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 next year going forward, and, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to changes, because that's what we need, Remember, I'm in a Capricorn country, very stagnated, doesn't like to move, doesn't like to change. You know, it's, you know, Saturn, it's Saturn country, moon is in Cancer in the 10th house, you know, Libra rising. There's a lot of squares going on in this country, you know, bam, bam, bam. That's one of the reasons why there's such a huge, huge mental illness capacity in London, in the UK, huge. You know, the drinking is off the charts, it's off the roof because we cannot emote we cannot feel. But those those again, that's changing too. You know? If anything, this decade, 2020s, has been a real eye opener. And it has been an eye opener for the best. So I think, like I said, look back on the past 15 years, what's happened to you, how you've benefited. Even if you haven't, try and pick out some and um let me know. You know, obviously this is my last video on Pluto and Capricorn. Um, I'm looking forward to doing like Pluto and Aquarius videos, but yeah, it's been one long ride. So yeah, that's my two cents worth on the end of this transit, guys. And feel free to like, subscribe, and share, and leave comments. 
and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.